mother is one being on this earth who can actually give that self-realization, who can actually give you that enlightenment. No sitting in little rooms doing strange positions for months on end to purify yourself and get yourself to some higher plane. No sitting down repeating mantras endlessly on the hope that maybe one day you will reach some other state of consciousness or some other higher stage of development, evolution. Mataji can give you that realization this evening. Um, the only prerequisite is the desire for it and the humility within yourself to be able to ask her for it. Um, I'll explain a little bit about this picture. Um, as you'll see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different major centers marked in the diagram. They represent what we call chakras, which are energy centers within the spinal column. Now, they're not things that you can carve open a spine and see within them. They are subtle energy centers in the same way that you can't pull a television set apart and see the picture. They're there, they exist, they affect our behavior. Our behavior affects them too, just as importantly. Um, they have been with us all the time. They are part of our absolute inner structure. They are part of our absolute being. When a person is in the presence of a realized soul, such as Mataji Nimala Devi, a process can occur whereby the Kundalini, which is, if you like, it's that tiny first energy that is created and is placed within each living entity, and the Kundalini resides in that triangular area there, which is in us, the sacrum, the coccyx, that, that bone right at the bottom of the spine, that is where that energy resides. I don't know if you're aware of it, but um, the actual word itself, sacrum, means, is, is from the same root structure as the word sacred. It's, I mean, the very fact that that is the word we call it means that somewhere back in our, in our history we knew that there was something very special about that particular bone. Um, the kundalini energy resides in there and another thing about that bone is if a person, say, is burned, that is the bone that remains right until the last. It's the last bone to burn. It's, it's, there's just a quality about it that is very special. The Kundalini resides there, and that is the energy which, when awakened, travels up through the different centers, all the way up through the spinal column itself, and eventually, when what we call enlightenment occurs, that energy actually comes out through the top of our heads. Now, it might sound a little strange, but you can feel that energy and hopefully you'll all be able to feel it this evening. And you can feel it as a cool breeze. Now, you know, some people actually feel it like there's a little fan sitting on top of their head blowing a little jet of cool air out there. It happens. You can't explain it in physical terms. It's an actual event. It actually occurs. And you can also feel this coolness across your palms. You may have heard of the breath of the Holy Spirit. That is what the cool breeze is. The Indians have a word for it called Chaitanya, which again is a cool breeze. The Middle Eastern people have a word for it. It's called the Ruh. It is the cool breeze. It's a thing that unfortunately we in the West haven't heard all that much about because our pursuits over the last couple of thousand years have been basically material, whereas in a lot of other cultures, in a lot of other countries, the thing behind people's lives 
isn't what material things they may own or may acquire or what intellectual pursuits they may follow. It is whether or not they are or can be connected with that primordial energy and that total energy which some people call God, some people call the spirit, whatever name you want to call it. Some cultures in the world have for years been trying to get themselves aligned with that spirit, aligned with that energy. We in the West have steered ourselves way away from there. However, obviously, there's plenty of people here who want to know a little more about it and want, if they can, to be reconnected, because it's what we all came from in the first place, with that energy. Now, the way the Kundalini works is that first, it has to be awakened by the energies first in that uh, little red four-petaled chakra at the base there it gives permission to the kundalini or gives gives notice to the kundalini that now is the time for it to be awakened it, it, it stirs and passes up through the first chakra by the way is called the muladhara chakra muladhara means the root, the support of the root, right? It's the actual thing that holds it all, the, the whole thing rests on, the whole thing has to grow out from. Um, I'll explain right from the beginning too that another thing that occurs as the Kundalini awakens is you can actually, if you have a problem within yourself, you can find out where it is and do something about it because as you can see, the colours correspond with colours we have drawn on the hands. You'll have to forgive us in that all of the colours in the diagram aren't the correct ones for the actual chakras themselves, for the energy centres themselves. They've, uh, we've, the chart was done in a little ignorance. It's, we've since learned out how to correct it, but we haven't quite finished doing it at the moment. However, you get the correspondence from the colours and as you can see, this spot here on the hand is the same colour as that spot at the base of the base of the spine, which is the Muladhara. And if you hold your hands out to Mataji, for instance, you may feel a numbness or a tingling or something in the base of your palm, which means that there is some problem in that particular chakra within your own subtle body and you can, if you have some problems, you can proceed to do something about it and get rid of them. The Kundalini does the work for you, it gets rid of the problems. You just have to have it awakened and it starts to take care of you. It is, as it were, your own mother that has loved you since the beginning of creation and will take, you know, now that you have the chance for it to be awakened within you, it will, will quite you'll notice right from the beginning that it will start to look after you. That there, there is this energy there that can take care of you on many, many, many levels. The Kundalini energy awakens from the Muladhara. It goes up to that green centre in the middle there first, which we call the Nabi chakra. Nabi means navel. It is the chakra that is behind the navel in the body. It has to do with they, uh, they all have different qualities, all the chakras. This, the particular quality of the Nabi chakra is to do with our sustenance, to do with our, what we could call our Dharma, um, the way we live. I mean, it's, say for instance, the man drinks very heavily, gambles a lot, goes out with a lot of different women, indulges in different drugs, perhaps, any, any of those things. They're not things that are going to destroy you, but they're things that are going to make it harder for you to live a balanced life within yourself. Um, and that has to do with this centre here, with the Nabi, with the Dharma of a person. As the Kundalini awakens, it goes to that centre, and as it gets enlightened, those qualities of Dharma, the Indian word Dharma, we can call it right living, I think we may have heard of that term. Whatever term we use, that is the quality that comes from there. And as the Kundalini passes through there and awakens that centre, 
those qualities can start to come out in our own life. Then it drops back down to the orange colored center there, which we call the Shwadastan. It has to do with creativity, um, as in artistic activity. And it also, as you can see, is the beginning of that yellow line, all right? Now that yellow line is one we use to denote what is called the right hand sympathetic nervous system, all right? Now we all have heard about the sympathetic nervous system. We have on the diagram there, you'll see the yellow line, the white line, and the blue line. The yellow line is the right side sympathetic nervous system. It has to do with activity, with the future, with planning, with um, the ego eventually. As you can see, it passes all the way through right up until it actually crosses over at this center here and ends up on this section of the head here, which is where what we call ego resides. It's, it's a thing we've all got. It's a thing that's been necessary to us to have to get to the stage of development that we have reached internally. I mean, we have been involved in a, in a growth process, in, a, in, a, in an evolutionary process that's finally brought us to the stage where now our mental capacities have grown, we have our physical capacities, they've all, you know, we've slowly evolved to the point where now we are at the purple colored center there, which we call the Sahastra, which is when that, when the human being is evolved to that stage, it is possible for that chakra to be opened. And it is at that point that the connection with the all-pervading occurs with the divine, the connection with the divine occurs. It is, it, it happens at that center. And to get there, we have to go all the way through all of the chakras, right? So we go from the Shwadastan, the active, principle there, the creative side, and from the Shwadastan we pass across that large green area which is the void, we could call it the ocean of illusion if you like, it's all of the things that are around us all the time trying to distract us, all of the things that are taking our attention away from what we really are, what we are really seeking, all of those things. And as we evolve, as we sort of discard all of the different diversions, you know, you may you may follow one path for years and years and years and finally after getting an extremely bitter taste in your mouth eventually you think, all right, I've had enough of that one, it hasn't reached me what I wanted, I'm going to try something else. Now we do that not just for one or two years but we do that for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to the point where we finally sort ourselves out and to the point where we finally get to where you are now which is coming to a meeting, hopefully, to find something out about Kundalini, hopefully, to gain enlightenment, which is the thing that we're all seeking. It's the thing we have all, that has been driving us right from the beginning of creation. That's, that's what it's about, you know, in the same way that the destiny of a tree is to flower, bear fruit, and keep on growing. Our destiny is to flower, bear fruit, and keep on growing into spiritual human beings, which is when Jesus spoke of the kingdom of heaven on earth, that's what in fact he was talking about, is when, not in some strange afterlife, but when we actually dwelled with God, if you call it God, on earth. Now that's something that is possible. It is something that is promised. I mean, not just one culture, but one you know, culture after culture after culture, guru after guru after guru, teacher after teacher, has promised that at some stage in the human development it would be possible for that connection with the spirit to occur, that it would be possible to live with the divine on earth. You know, it was the promise of Jesus Christ. Muhammad spoke of it. Buddha spoke of it. Buddha didn't speak of the divine. He spoke of the one he spoke of, you know, freedom from all of the toils and troubles, but it's the same process. Buddha, we actually find, is the ruler of that yellow section in the top of the head of the, of the ego. That was, he grew, he grew to show us that development. Jesus Christ, by the way, is, resides in the center. 
in what we call the Agya Chakra. I'll go back down to the large green, or where we have the three green dots in the centre there. That is the heart chakra, where the heart is, or anahat as some people call it, because of the sound. Anahat is like the sound of the heart. Um, that is where the spirit resides within the heart. I mean, we can't feel joy, we can't feel love, we can't, you know, they are all qualities of the heart. And eventually the thing we have to realize and eventually the thing we discover is that God is love and that that love is what is behind absolutely everything. Absolutely, it is the it is the thing out of which the whole of creation has grown, is that love. And we all have a tiny bit of that within us, actually resides in our heart. Um, if the heart stops, the life stops. It's where it is. Now, what happens is as the Kundalini rises, it awakens that center. Again, we have the next center, the Vishuddhi Chakra. That has to do with communication, with our self-esteem, with... Um, it's sort of where we finally get to be human too in a lot of ways. It's this center here and that chakra was opened at the stage when the human being grew from the ape who had his head bowed to the man who had his head raised. It's a very very important stage in in our evolution it's you know it's 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 may seem only a little thing on one level but to actually it's the break from being an animal to being a human occurs at that point and it is that point that we start to communicate where we have words where we have gestures where we have facial expressions all of those things actually start to operate from this chakra here the vishuddhi chakra and the kundalini passes through there and to the what's called the agya chakra some people might call it the third eye um, it's a, it is a third eye in a sense but it's an inward looking eye it's not one that you look out through um, it is where Jesus Christ resides when we have the words of Christ that you must pass through me to get to my father that is precisely what he is talking about you have to pass through that center you have to get as it were the okay from Jesus that you may pass that the kundalini energy may pass through there and may pass into the sahastra where this center the crown will open and connect you with the divine um, the quality of that chakra one we tend to forget in the so-called Christian countries is the quality of forgiveness. I don't think we can have any greater lesson than that of Jesus, the Lord himself, as he was being crucified, saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I mean, there he was with the most powerful being in creation who could have, as it, who could have destroyed everyone and everything who was there begging his father that his murderers be forgiven and it's an incredible thing it's you know i mean a human being can only ever aspire to that wisdom and to that that absolute love because that's what it came from when he said that um, and that is the quality of the agya chakra um, people may find they get headaches a lot that well they worry a lot that there's a whole lot of mental activity anything to do with that, this center here tends to pass if somewhere within yourself you can find out who it is that you haven't forgiven it might be yourself you know you might be incredibly hard on yourself one of the hardest things to do is to forgive yourself for all of the things that you feel you may or may not have done is to turn around and say, okay, you're forgiven, you know, the end of it. And as that quality of forgiveness starts to come into our own lives, 
the Agya Chakra itself begins to work more fully and to give its blessings to us. At the Sahastra, what is called the Thousand Petal Lotus in Indian religious teaching, is where all of the qualities of all of the chakras are merged into one and are balanced out. They actually, um, each particular center, as it were, has its seats on the actual head itself and, and they all move up to actually like, like not like the United Nations, but they all converge in the one area and, and can govern your life from there with peace and freedom. Um, you'll see, I spoke about the yellow side, the right-hand side. Ah, his mother, mother Mataji, now she will speak to this. I was just about to speak about the left hand side. It is the side of the past, of our memories, of our conditioning, of why we look back at all the things that we used to do and think about why can't we be like that now, all of those things. They are things, qualities on the left hand side. Now we can disappear right out in the left hand side into what's called the subconscious, into what's called the collective subconscious, where not only are we dealing with our past, we're dealing with the past of many, many, many people, and we can get very lost in that area, in the same way that when we go too far on the other side, on the right hand side, into the future, we get into the areas where, again, we lose control, where we, we don't know who we are, where we get joined in with all of the egos and all of the futures of many, many, many other people aside from ourselves and we can, what we call the superconscious, the collective superconscious, we can get lo lost into that area also. However, as you can see, there is that pure white line up through the center, which is the central nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, which is where the Kundalini will pass and where that energy can bring us back towards the center bring us back towards the point where finally it will pass through all the chakras and through the sahastra, giving us enlightenment and giving us the union with the divine, which is what we are seeking, Mother. Ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in introducing to you Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi. She's come to Melbourne and I think probably the most important thing that at a material level that she's managed to bring for all of us is this beautiful rain. As she drove in from the airport today, somebody said to her, Mother, we need rain, so she just put her attention to it and the heavens seem to have opened tonight. But at a much more subtle level, she's able to give us far more, as Bill has been saying. She's able to give us the experience of self-realization. We've come to that point in our evolution where we have to make that final ascent and become a higher being. A being which becomes one with God. A being which becomes a subtler being, which not only responds to those things which we traditionally call our ego or our superego, which is really our subconscious, but we respond to the nature of the spirit, which is eternal but which is sleeping within us. After self-realization, this energy of Kundalini rises and with the spirit puts you in touch with the all-pervading spirit of God. And at that moment, when it passes through the Sahastra, this chakra at the top of the head, you become one with God. You become a realized soul. You become a peer, as it's referred to in the Muslim scriptures. You become pa, as it's said in the Hindu scriptures. It's there and it happens. It's an experience. And yet, 
one might ask, why is it so easy? And how do such a large number of people get it? I've seen 6,000 people get it at a meeting in India. There are very few people here tonight, but at some of the meetings which Sri Mataji conducts, even in recently, last night and the night before in Adelaide, three and 400 at a time get their self-realization. It happens en masse because the grace of God is overflowing now. And here on the earth is somebody who is an enlightened light who can give it freely to everyone. Just in her presence, the Kundalini awakens just by merely stretching your hands out towards her. That subtlety that lies within you is awakened and all your seeking over your many, many lives is rewarded at this moment. You've been drawn here in a very, very extraordinary way. It's no accident that all of you are here tonight. It's the reward of your seeking, as I said. So, in a very humble way, but remaining scientific to the extent that you keep an open mind about it, I suggest that you listen to what Mataji has to say, but more than that, you allow yourself to experience the cool vibrations that were referred to in the Christian scriptures as the cool wind of the Holy Spirit, which Muhammad said would be flowing in the hands. In fact, he said, at this time of resurrection, your hands will speak. The Hindu scriptures, many, many of them have said it. Adi Shankaracharya in the sixth century spoke very, very eloquently about the Chaitanya, which is, again is this cool vibration which we feel on the hands and which we feel coming from the top of the head. So, as Bill has explained the subtle centers within us, as he's explained the left side and the right side of our subtle body, in other words, as he's explained the mechanism that lies within, now really all that has to happen is you have to get it. And as you get it, you can give it to others. This is the great joy of self-realization since the advent of Sri Mataji. So, when you get it, you should develop it. When you develop it, you'll find that all your physical and emotional and mental problems will dissolve, but that's only a byproduct. And then, of course, you have to give it to others. Because as you get the blessings of God, so too those blessings must be given to others. Sahaja Yoga is not a club, it's not a cult, it's not an organization, and you certainly can't pay any money for it. And yet, quietly, but very encouragingly, it is growing throughout the world. I've just arrived in Australia with Sri Mataji as part of a world tour that she's conducting this year throughout England, the whole of Europe, Southeast Asia. She's been through India along with about 60 of us, us meaning Australians, English, French, German, Italian, American, Canadian, all sorts of nations have been with her, watching the miracle of Sahaja Yoga spreading throughout India. But we're watching it spread throughout the West and it's catching on like wildfire. Catching on meaning people are getting their self-realization and developing it and becoming complete beings. Getting their inner satisfaction, their inner joy, and knowing that they've reached the goal that they've been seeking over their many lives. Mataji is the wife of an eminent diplomat. He is the Secretary General of the United Nations Organizations, United Nations Organization, International Maritime Organization. She's a housewife. She's a mother. She's a grandmother. She's well known as the daughter of the Salve family in India who were freedom fighters at the time of Gandhi and that period when the British rule came to an end. She's the sister of a cabinet minister in the Indira Gandhi government. So she's very well known at the international level, but that level she plays down. That level she's not really so interested in. That which she's interested in is the spirit. In her very warm, in her very loving, in her very tender way, 
her devotees, those people who gain their self-realization, are those to whom she devotes her greatest attention. So whether you know her in person, in the physical sense, or whether you gain your self-realization even from a photograph, it doesn't matter. Her blessings pour towards you and through you, and slowly you start to feel that bliss and that joy that have been spoken of so eloquently and so widely in all the scriptures. It sounds too good to be true. I must admit, it sounds too good to be true. So again I say, be open-minded, even be scientific. Keep it as a hypothesis at first. See that you feel the cool wind. Don't mistake it for the air conditioning. It's a quite different coefficient. You feel the cool vibrations over and through and almost as if flowing through the body. You feel it in a very, very subtle way. Your ego will say, is it the wind that's blowing from the air conditioner? It's not like that at all. We've been in rooms which have been absolutely without air conditioning. We've been in halls like this which are completely sealed. It makes no difference. But you have to feel those cool vibrations. But if you don't feel it, don't be too disappointed because Sri Mataji will probably work on the centers a little, help to clear the centers a little, explain to you what might be the problem, and generally assist you in the experience of self-realization. So without any further introduction from me, it gives me great pleasure to again introduce to you in Melbourne, Her Holiness Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi. I bow to all the seekers of truth. We have to understand that God has created us as human beings with a purpose. But in those modern times when we don't even believe in God or on a, in a creator or any such energy that exists, it's very hard to talk of God and to introduce him to be the one who has made us human beings. But even Darwin said that if man has come so far, he will have to go a little further to understand himself. I would suggest that one has to only understand one point, that whatever we have so far known has been the knowledge of the tree. But we have to have the knowledge of the roots. To get the knowledge of the roots, we have to become subtler than what we are. This awareness, this human awareness, cannot take us that side. For example, you are all listening to me very intensely, but if I say, please take your attention inside, you say, how? Mother, it's impossible. How do we take our attention inside? It's only possible when something happens within you that your attention is drawn inside. Then only you will come to know that you are a beautiful instrument made through ages. <clears throat> All these centers that are shown here represent your evolutionary process, one by one how you evolved through ages to this stage of evolution. And now, after evolving up to the human stage, what do we have to do? So we come to right conclusions about ourselves, first of all, that we have to become something more. Something has to happen to us. Now, so far in our evolution, <coughs> whatever has happened has happened in our awareness. A Sanskrit called Chaitana means a horse can go through a dirty lane. A dog can go through a dirty lane. 
but a human being cannot. He just can't bear it. He'll vomit, he'll refuse, he'll not accept at any cost to pass through something very filthy. So our awareness towards dirt, filth, towards beauty has definitely got a new dimension. And this new dimension that we have got is not sufficient enough because still we have not understood why are we here. Why all this has been done to create us into such a beautiful personality? What is the purpose of this creation? And in this confusion only, we really fall into the traps of not understanding that there must be some power that does it. It is very easy to deny the power of God because who is there to challenge it? Or who is going to say that, how dare you deny? Supposing you have a policeman, he is elected by you, so you cannot uh, overthrow him or you have to listen to him. But God is not elected by you. He is appointed by himself. So as he is there, you can always say whatever you like about him. But the same thing is to understand that actually human beings don't do any work which is living. We cannot transform one flower into a fruit, even one. What we do is to take some dead things, make buildings, make beautiful furniture, make these car carpets all man-made, every sort of thing. And then we start thinking, oh, we are great. Even the science can only find whatever is available or can be seen through these eyes or felt through these senses. It cannot go beyond it. And even if it sometimes goes like the auras and all that they see, they cannot explain it. For example, if, if there is any doctor, they will understand that doctors are honest on this point, that acetylene and adre adrenaline, acetylcholine and adrenaline, two Chemicals, which are chemicals, just chemicals, react differently in the body and they say that the mode of action of these two, we cannot explain why it is augmentation or why it is relaxation. They admit it. So many things we have not been able to explain. Now, if I say this is a beautiful instrument and it is fantastic to believe that we are great, I would just give another simple example that if you have to come to this room and there is no light, I just tell you, all right, push that button and you'll get lights everywhere. No, it happens. It becomes a fantastic thing for a person who has never seen electricity, who has never known anything, who has no knowledge of electricity that only you press one button and you get it. But behind all this organism, behind all this working, all that is done, there is a big history. There are lots of people who have worked to achieve this. People have sacrificed so much to achieve this. But we are taking the benefit of that, as today we are enjoying electricity. How many people must have died discovering it? How many people must have sacrificed their life for, disco for discovering the use of it for the masses? In the same way, we must understand that Maybe that we are something fantastic, reach a conclusion that we have to just feel it. And unless and until you feel that greatness within you, you should not just deny that you can achieve it. You have to achieve it. Actually, if you do not achieve it, you will fall short of your evolution. Today in the world, if you see, everywhere I go, there are so many seekers, so many seekers. Such a time was never there before, say about 50 years back, we did not know the word seekers. People did not believe that there are seekers. But today, you find so many seekers all over the world. They have gone to all kinds of other alternative things. They have tried to find out if they can find truth by altering their lives, by doing this or by doing that. The reason is they are not at all satisfied with what they see. They are intelligent enough to see that it's not the end 
of our lives and we don't live just for insurances. Now, then one starts thinking that if these are the seekers in this world, why so many have come on this earth? This is a special time, already predicted thousands and thousands of years back. In every kind of prediction, they have talked about it. There was a book called Nadi Granth written, you can't say how many years back, but was revised only 300 years back by another person called Bhujandar. Now this Nadi Granth is written by a person who is actually the starting point of astrology in India. The one who started the whole astrology has been started from India. And this is the man Bhrugu who did it. And he wrote this Nadi Granth in which he has described, according to him, he said it in Sanskrit language but was again translated and brought to up to date level, that in 1970, Something will happen, a personality will come on this earth who will give realization to thousands of people by a Sahaja method. It's clearly written down. You will be amazed to know that it is so because we have a book. In that book, all these prophecies are written. And what will happen? The Kundalini will rise and people will get their realization. To Indians, Kundalini is not a new knowledge. Of course, there are some people who went from uh, other countries and try to study about Kundalini. <coughs> now, when such people come to India, they do not reach the roots at all. They are just caught up by people who want to make money out of them or to mislead them. It's a big market there for all such things. And now when these people also came, especially the Germans, when they came to India, they were caught up into such mess. And they were given books which were nothing but just the opposite of what Kudalini is. It's about the people who are doing Tantrism. And Tantrism is a system in which people do anti-God activity. With anti-God activity you get all kinds of horrible experiences of God and the Kundalini and they have described all of them as if they are the real effects of Kundalini. It's like the knowledge of a naive villager coming and putting his hands into the holes of uh, a plug and saying that electricity gives you a big shock. So it is even worse than that because Kundalini never gives you trouble. She is your mother. She settled down here in the triangular bone as you see, is called as sacrum. Now this sacrum bone is, sacrum means sacred. And when I ask people, that how is it that this bone is called as sacred in Greek? When I went to Greece, I asked the people, why do you call this a sacrum? Then they told me that they had a report long time back before Alexander went to India and they, there was a report between Indo-Aryan groups and they told that this bone should be called as sacrum. Now imagine that this bone specially should be called as sacrum and no other bone. So this bone has got this three and a half coil energy settled down inside there. Now some of these books that I've read, such big books written on Kundalini, some of them say the Kundalini is here, somebody says in the nose, somebody says somewhere else. Means that just, just using the ignorance of people to print something, write something and just mislead them to make some money out of these books. So far, I have not written any book. I'm sorry, I have not yet done any that work so far. But anything can be written in the book. Whatever is written in the book is not the truth. And you should not accept it. How much does it take to print a book? You people are living in a, such an advanced country. You know, it hardly takes anything to write a book about anything. Especially about God and his work. Because even, you'll be amazed that Hitler used to talk about God. Napoleon used to talk about God. All these horrible people used to talk about God and sometimes they believed that God was in their favor because they thought they were rather successful. Now, these books or whatever they have told you is not true. This is the truth that the Kundalini lies in your sacred bone called sacrum. You can see the pulsation of the Kundalini at the time when the Kundalini is raised, not in everyone. If you have got a blockage, 
in that another center that is there or the upper test center. Then this Kundalini because this is the pure desire of becoming one with God. This is the purest desire we, which you have. And when it is awakened, it makes a effort, a tremendous effort. But I have seen some people have Kundalinis which are just hurt, like a beaten up snake. It just does. It tosses its head on all the sides and tries to get out. But it cannot because the gentleman or the seeker who has got this Kundalini within himself, his own mother, has hurt her so much that she cannot raise her head. She's very tired and she wants the supply of more energy to rise. So when people are here, I have to tell you one thing, that it's nice that you have come for real realization, you should take it. But you can't demand it. You can't demand it. For today, I've found one gentleman was just shaking before me like this, all the time. So he said, why am I shaking before you? I said, because your nerves are out. You are a nervous person. That's why you are shaking, all your nerves are out. I have to steady them, otherwise the Kundalini won't rise and you won't feel the cool breeze. Because Kundalini is now attending to those nerve centers which are absolutely overdone. They're absolutely fagged out and tired. He is a young man, about 25 years. I am an old woman. But I said, look at my hands are not shaking. Why should your hands shake like an old man of 80 years all the time? You must think about it. Why should they think? Should happen. So this is what it is, that some people get it. Most of them get it, but some cannot get it. Now the attitude should be little different from what you have towards anybody else. Here, you have to get something out of me. You have to make use of me. Not that I have to use you for any purpose whatsoever. It should be clear cut to you that you are asking for something. You deserve it, no doubt. It's like you go to the bank, all right? There's a banker sitting there. If you have some money in the bank, you can go and talk to him, but you can't be rude with the bank. You have to say, all right, I have got this money with you, please may I have? Now the grace of God is so gracious that it gives you many fold much more than what you have really reserved in the bank. I can see that working out so well. So we have to understand that we are made in our own glory. God has made us a fantastic thing. We are a great instrument that has to receive its blessings. And as this instrument is put to the mains, once you put to your mains, you will be surprised how fantastic you are. It's amazing how people are not aware of themselves. It is amazing how people do not know how precious they are to the divine. Human beings are the epitome of this creation. Forget the moon, forget the sun, forget this earth. Everything is nothing. It's at your feet. You are the highest that God has created and the way we fritter away our life for nothing at all, for superficial things, is something very, very surprising. We are not at all aware that how much the nature has worked for us to make us human beings. And once you realize that you are the spirit, realize doesn't mean that you just realize through your mental process. It is a happening within you which takes place. You become that. And once you become that, you'll be amazed that your becoming will prove that you are really the epitome. You are the meaning. You are everything. And without you, the creation has no meaning at all. It's like a tree which has now the flowers. And they have to become the fruits. Otherwise, the tree has no meaning at all. But whatever we do mentally is artificial. Because it has no roots attached to it. It has no moorings to it. Now, you say your politics or your economics, all is artificial. But in that also you can find a lot of truth. For example, economics says <coughs> that wants in general are not satiable. Individual wants can be satisfied. But wants in general are not satiable. Means this matter cannot give us satisfaction. If he could, then we would have been satisfied with one thing. 
But we buy one thing, then we buy, want to buy another thing, and then we want to buy another thing, and still we are the most dissatisfied souls ever living on this earth. Now, economics, another, then politics we can see, is that people talk of, say, communism, they talk of socialism, they talk of democracy, of capitalism. It's also artificial to me, it's just a play of human beings. Because when you say you are a capitalist, what is your capital? This you can't take with you, it's of no use. You don't want to share it, what's the use of such a capital? Well, I would say I'm a capitalist because I have all the powers within myself. And I'm the greatest communist because I can't live without sharing it. I just can't help it. You see, people can't understand me. They think you are a nicely married lady. Your husband is such a nice person. Uh, is such a nice gentleman. He loves you so much. He cares for you so much. You are a grandmother. You are a mother. And why are you doing all this and running about everywhere talking to people? They can't understand this communism which is so important to me that I cannot get my joy without sharing it with others. It's something which people have to gradually take in and once they take in, they become themselves. It's my job that I have to give you what you have. It's your own. I do not do anything about it. It's your own. All you are built in that way. Only thing what I do, like a candle which is enlightened, can enlighten any other candle which is ready. But some people will escape saying, I'm not ready. Now you let me find out if you are ready or not. That's another side of it. Mother, you are, we are sinners. We are not ready. Now you let me do the job for you. I may be able to put the candle right. Why do you condemn yourself? This is the other side of it. Sometimes people get into ego moods and sometimes they get into such a super ego mood that they say, Mother, oh, we are no good. We are sinners. We have done this. We have done that. Now forget it. If I don't know the job, then I better not do it. But I think I know it. I've done it. So let me do it and let us see if I can give what you have. Because that is supposed to be God's promise that you have to get your resurrection. That you have to become selfless. That you are to be born again. And all this has been done within you with this aim and is not to be wasted. I don't know how many in Melbourne are going to get it. How many are going to get in Sydney? That's besides the points. It depends on how much you care for yourself. But wherever I go, I will try my level best to do it. Now, how I cure people and what happens, actual cure is not my, at all my job. It's just a byproduct by which you get cured completely. Because once you get to your absolute and you get to the source, which is all pervading, which, is, which starts flowing through you, then your problem is solved. You never get exhausted, you never get upset. It's all solved. The whole energy works it out. So the compassion that people talk of, that we are very compassionate and we are very peace-loving and all that, is so superficial. This is the compassion that it works. It works, it doesn't talk, it just works. This is the peace that exists, that you feel, is expressed within you and without a person of that caliber if he stays with other people who are turbulent, who are uh, volcanic, who are violent, they become peaceful. It works. That's what it is. You must know that whatever people are saying to you, it must work. Like going to other gurus, to other people, you should know that it has not given you any power of your own. Leave alone whatever they have to say about me. I am this, I am that, I am that. Forget it. What I'm saying, what are you? You have to receive your own significance. You have to understand your own meaning. And if it works in you, then it's all right. That's what you should ask anyone if you go to and say that, can you give me my own powers, not your powers. You may be very great and you might be doing something. But people are so ridiculously superficial, so ridiculously superficial that a person, if he buys 58 Rolls Royce out of the money of loots that they have out of these uh, people who go to them, we think, oh, he has 58 Rolls Royce. He, such a man can impress these English who could not be impressed by anything else if he has a big cavalcade or a big procession or these 58 uh, looted uh, Rolls Royce on the road. Then people say, oh, what a guru he is. He's got 58 Rolls Royce. Yes, 
yes, you won't believe. And he wanted to have the 59th one. And he went away to America. And he wrote a letter saying that if you give me the 59th, I'll come. The poor boys, you see, they suffered. They ate only potatoes. They starved themselves. They have, there are 50,000 still in the UK. Absolutely cabbages, lost people, absolutely lost. You can't talk to them. They shake when you go before them. They can't understand it. It's all finished there. Nothing. They are all lost people. And if you go and tell them, how can you get a Rolls Royce for a sadhu? He's a sannyasi. He says, how can you give him a Rolls Royce? So they say, we have got the spirit. Means some spirit has possessed them, you see. We have got the spirit and we have to give just metal, what is in Rolls Royce is metal. But why don't they think, why does the guru think that this metal is precious? You see, we don't use our brains at all when you go to guru. Surprisingly, if he says, I will make you fly, all right, at least you should ask the guru to fly. Why not make him fly and see if he can fly or not? At least minimum of minimum that you should do, isn't it? But that also we never do, we just accept it. Because he has a big uh, organization and he has a big publicity because you can pass through seven rooms to reach him and all that he creates a feeling and then you think, oh, it's great to fly. And if somebody says that, go and ask that guru to fly, people don't like it. They don't want to hear anything about it. And then you pay thousands and thousands of pounds to them. You end up as penniless people, as epileptic people, and you can't understand what wrong it was. You didn't use your brains. You didn't use your brains. I would say, I know, I must condemn all these devilish people who have ruined so many seekers because they are seeking truth. They are my children. They are my own. I know. I feel very sorry for that. You don't know how much I want to work that I should save all of them. But I also should tell you that this is your mistake. You misunderstand. You don't know that you can't pay for your realization. You can't pay for God. Christ was bought for 30 rupees. It's a very good example to understand. He was bought to be killed. Another example is that when people were selling some things in the temple, he took a big whip and whipped them, absolutely in a great temper, who, who said on the cross that, please, God, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. But now it is so sad that if you do like that, you won't be able to forgive yourself. Christ may be, but you may not be able to forgive yourself for doing all these mistakes and committing such horrible injuries upon yourself and troubling your kundalini to that extent. This self-realization you have been seeking for ages, many lives. You have been seekers for many lives, and the time has come. This great time of resurrection, the great time of your judgment, at this time, you should take it, take it up that you have to be self realized Only this is my message to you. I hope you will understand it. May God bless you. I would like you to ask me some questions because today is the first day. But ask relevant questions. Uh, some people, you see, just ask questions just to show off. Then I would say they should take another hall to give a lecture there. But normally, <laughs> Yes, yeah, some people start giving another lecture to me, you see, and instead of my lecture, I have to listen to their lecture, which has no relevance to it, you see. So I would <laughs> request you not to waste others' time, be civil to them, and ask questions which are relevant to the subject. Thank you very much. Right. Any questions? Each Keep night, Mataji is going to be speaking here. Keep the cane on one side. <laughs> <laughs> Each night, Mataji is going to be speaking here. She'll be talking tomorrow night about the centers that lie up to the heart, and the next night, the centers that lie to the Sahasra, in particular the chakra of the Sahasra. So, any particular questions about the individual centers within us, she'll be explaining on a day-by-day -day basis. So any questions thus far? I'd like to know if having vertebrae in the spine out of place interferes with the rising of the country. 
Does having a vertebrae out of place in the spine interfere with the rising of Kundalini? It does to some extent, it does. Definitely it does, but we can put it right. The vertebrae can be put right and the Kundalini can be brought in. It does. So many things do happen. If you, have a per you are a person overread, if you have read too many books and the books are in your head, I have to empty that also. <laughs> I actually do this work as a profession and I find that if the subtle center is fixed, the spinal problems just disappear. I used to have three and four adjustments a week to correct my spine and now I have none at all. So first fix the subtle within us and then the gross part, the spinal misalignments and so on will just get better. I'm not too sure, but earthly marriages, which seem to be okay, but you're saying a mismarriage of souls, perhaps, but maybe there is some sort of mismarriage in some way of souls of those same people. Can there be a perfectly normal, as we call it, earthly marriage, and perhaps a mismarriage of souls in a heavenly sense? You see the spirit? in every being is perfect. Everybody's spirit is perfect. There's no imperfection with it. But some people have a more reflection of the spirit in their character. And some people don't have. They have more darkness and more, we can say, outward look, a materialistic, you can call them, or you can call them that over-romantic type, any sort of thing which is outside. But doesn't matter. We have seen people who have been married before. They said they are maladjusted. I would say 90% such marriages are now doing well. But maybe there could be terrible difference also between the two persons, as you say, it's possible. But that is to be seen. Just now you should not worry about it. If there is any maladjustment, it might be put right. If it doesn't work out, then you have to work out the correction as far as possible. See, it is said, karma neva adhikaraste. Is that which we can do the work? We can work it out as far as possible. But if it doesn't work, forget it. That's it. But once you are a realized soul, you become so congenial, so tolerant, so understanding. Actually, your being itself corrects another person. But maybe some people can be such gone cases that whatever you may try, they may not come back. So it's not important to worry about those things. We'll see later on how the thing is and how it has to be worked out. All right? Would you please explain more about the realization process when it comes out on top of your head? Could you explain self-realization and in particular how it manifests on your hands and how it comes out of the top of your head? It just comes out. <laughs> you see, how will you explain how does a primule or the germ of a seed comes out? It's like that. It's a living process, as I said. The Kundalini rises and when she enlightens all other centers, she passes through them and then when she comes up here, at this point, this point, is very important in human beings. It's bestowed, or we can say that it is governed by the deity of Lord Jesus Christ. And he sucks in these two institutions called ego and superego. By that, there's an opening made and the Kundalini just jets out and you can feel it coming out of your head. This is the actualization of baptism. It's not something artificial that you take water and put it on somebody's head and say that you are baptized in here, the child is screaming with that baptism. 
<laughs> so it's an actualization. It's a living process, how it works. But while rising, of course, lots of things happen, like uh, the chakras go into various moods. Uh, they try to sustain the kundalini. They try to keep it there. All these things happen. This happened when the kundalini is awakened, not before that. That's why, like somebody talks of Raj Yoga, that you cut your tongue, push it back and do the khechari. And by that, you can raise your kundalini. And it is absurd, you see. Like the car has not started, so you move the wheels and the car will start. But when the kundalini is rising, this tongue is little bit pulled inside, no doubt, automatically. You don't feel it also. Slightly it is pulled inside and is released again. But by cutting this tongue and putting it back, do you think the kundalini will rise? It's so superficial. It's so artificial. And that's how they have done all these things. Even now, for example, hatha yoga that we do is, of course, hatha yoga is ashtangas. It's not only one that we call as yoga is standing on your head. It's not the only thing. It is ashtangas. There are eight things. And in that also, Ishwara Pranidhara means the establishment of God is the first step. Because before the kundalini has started, if you start doing any exercises, you may, ha you may be harming yourself because you don't know where is the problem. Supposing you have a problem in the stomach and you are doing the exercises of the nose, what's the use? You'll spoil the nose as well as the stomach is already bad. So it's very indiscriminate. It's very scientific. The mantras are the same thing. Where to say which mantras, what chakras are catching, which deity is to be uh, awakened, we must know all the signs behind. And everybody knows, there is no secret about it. There is not a thing, you come here inside and you pay me 300 pounds and I give you a mantra. All right, that mantra you are not to tell anybody because that mantra means nothing. You see, there was a fellow who paid 300 pounds and I asked him what was the mantra, he said, Tinga. Now if you tell an Indian, he will just laugh. If he hears what it means, it means this. Can you imagine such nonsense? And don't tell anybody, it's a big mafia. Don't tell anybody. Just keep quiet. If you tell anybody, then because you are found out. So you cannot give one mantra. Is another uh, funny idea people have that you just give one mantra to somebody. Of course, I mean, if you have a problem at a particular point, one can, be, one can say that at this time you say this mantra to clear out. But then later on, you don't go on with it. Then you do the one which where you need, required. Is it it? It's simple as that. Supposing we are suffering from some trouble, we take medicine for that particular thing. And then when we are suffering from another trouble, we take another medicine for that particular thing. We don't go on taking the same medicine whether it is anything. So it is a very scientific knowledge which you will pick up in no time. Eight days are sufficient to learn the whole of surgery. Once you get your realization, that's the main point. Does meat eating interfere with no, this not process? No, not at all. But you see, you have to understand what sort of a personality you are. If you are the right-sided personality, then you should not eat meat. You should take to some milder. You can, we can. I call them grass eating. You can do. But if you have, say, you are a left-sided person, then you have to take meat. You see, I would say in general that. Australians should not eat so much meat as they eat. They eat a bit too much. They should take more vegetables. But Indians should eat some meat because otherwise they'll become cowards. So it is what sort of a personality it is. I don't know from where this idea has come that vegetarianism is going to take to God. In India, most of the people are vegetarians because they can't afford it, you see. No, 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 no. I don't think uh, uh, one of our attitudes uh, here is to take to God because I think... Uh, because Yes, but it is not important for everyone. What I'm saying, as it is, we have to understand, we have to be discreet. We have to understand who needs what. Everybody need not take vegetarian food. Everybody need not take non-vegetarian food. It's the prakriti, they call it, the nature of a person. You must find out what is the nature of the person. Is. If he, supposing he's suffering from high blood pressure and other things like that, he has to take to uh, food, which is... Uh, which will control his, I mean, which will give him a, another side, means he should stop eating meats and things like that, all right? So he, he balances himself, to balance himself. The whole food is, uh, theory is to be understood through 
the understanding of your being, first of all, what sort of a being you are, and what is lacking in you is to be supplemented. So we just can't uh, say that now so many people now, in doctors, if you go to them, they'll say, cut down your sugar, general. But it's absurd. Sugar is very important for liver. If you don't take sugar, I don't know what will happen to you, you'll become like sticks, you see, absolutely like sticks. If those people who are right-sided, if they don't take sugar at all, I don't know what's going to happen to them. They'll be very irritable, hot-tempered, absolutely stick-like people. <laughs> they'll hit you like a stick, you know. So that's something, a general statement like that is very dangerous. Just not to have. But what is the science behind it? Carbohydrates are very important for the body, especially if you are thinking too much, if you are a futuristic person, if you are right-sided. It's absolutely essential that you must have sufficient carbohydrates. We have treated so many liver patients with sugar. So this kind of a general statement even, sorry for, I must say the doctors should not feel hurt, but it's a very general statement doctors also make, no doubt about it, without going into it to find it. It's very easy to say, now, you all should stop sugars. Why? Our forefathers ate sugars, they were healthier people than us, I tell you. All of us are sick now, this we are that brother. If physically we are all right, mentally we are out. If we are mentally out, uh, then we think that physically we are all right. So we have a satisfaction, but I think both are just the same. So we have to be discreet in anything that we do. It cannot be a fad, it cannot be an ism, it cannot be a hard and fast diet. It's all made for you. God has made everything for you. You must understand what we should eat, what will suit us. That is to be found out on a person, what sort of a personality he is. In our Sahaja Yoga, many people take to vegetables and many people have to take to meat eating. And by that they have improved their health very much. He is one who was suffering from high blood pressure, God knows how many things. He just dropped it like that. And he keeps low on meats, I think. Do you find that more people today are sicker in general than they were 50 years ago? No doubt. Because the time has come to see. This is the time you are born for this. Many children are born to realize this. So many children. Now we have in our ashram about nine children, very beautiful ones, all born realized. Absolutely there. You can talk to them better than you can talk to uh, even a very well-educated person. When I talk to them, I just find I am just one with them. So this is the time, the resurrection time. This is the time that is the last judgment, and that's why so many have taken birth for their judgment. All right? No, I didn't ask this kind of sick thing. I asked sick in the head, malad. Sick, physically sick. Physically sick. Hmm. She's asking whether more people are sicker today than they were 50 years ago. But I, the, uh, the question is obvious. I think medical science and statistics have proven this. So I don't think there's any question there. No, no, but what she's saying physically... You want to know why. She wants to know why. Because you think they are physically sick, is it? <laughs> Your judgment? No. You see, they are physically sick uh, because they have lost their roots. They are gone to extremes and imbalances. We cannot go to imbalance. You see, religion is to keep yourself in balance. There are ten religions in the human being, like ten valencies. As carbon has four valencies, we have ten valencies, about which all the primordial masters who came on this earth have taught. Like Lao Tse, like Socrates, we can say Abraham, Moses, and many in India also. They came and told us that we should keep the balance. Balance our life, keep in the center for the ascent. If you are not balanced, you cannot ascend. But people have gone to extremes. They are faddist. Whatever you tell them, if you tell them that, see, now you are not well, so you do something. They will do it so much that they'll outwit everything. <laughs> they always go to the extreme of everything. So that's how the problems are there. But it doesn't matter. But moreover, we are sick because we are seeking, because we are not satisfied, 
we feel unhappy, we can't sleep, we don't know why we are living. Is the other way round. We are not seeking because we are sick, but we are sick because we are seeking. Why is the Kundalini identified as a female form? What? Why is Kundalini identified as a female form? Because it is the power of God. And God is regarded as He. And the Kundalini as the mother. She as the father and the Holy Ghost as the mother. She is the Holy Ghost. So because he is the father, we have to have a lady with him. So we call her the mother. And one should not feel bad about it. Men should not feel bad at all because you all had a mother. You could not have come on this earth without a mother. You just can't help it. That's how the nature is. You have to accept the fact. Mother is a surety, isn't it? Yes, please. Just first here, then you. Does uh, mother have a guru? And at what point does she gain self-realization? Do you have a guru? And at what stage did you receive self-realization? I neither have a guru nor I want you to have a guru. You better become your own gurus. Secondly, I've been born like that. I never got any realization or anything. I just got realization, I should say human realization, when I understood what was the problem with human beings. I worked on the all permutations and combinations of human beings because I wanted to have an our mass media by which I could give realization to thousands of people. Because any discovery which is made and is not brought to that level, it is absolutely detrimental to the growth. For example, uh, you see Jesus was crucified. Why? Because he was alone. Only for his mother, nobody knew what he was. At that time, he could not achieve this because you all were not there at that time. And also, other people, you know, how the saints have suffered, how every prophet has suffered, because they could not create a mass understanding of it. So at a certain point, it has to become a mass thing. In the tree of life, there are only three or four flowers in the beginning. But when it grows, when the blossom time comes, then so many flowers are there and they become the fruits. So I, I, I just saw that this is the time I have to do this job. So you would call it my human realization when I understood human beings. Of course, even now, sometimes I get shocked the way they behave. I mean, I just don't understand. But I think now I understand them. For those people who can't quite understand that answer, don't think about There's it too much. There's another gentleman who was asking a question. Well, there has to be somebody special, but find out for yourself. That's the best way. You don't worry about me. You worry about yes. yourself. <laughs> I must be someone all right. Even if I'm not, doesn't matter. If you are going to get it, why not have it? Who, the gentleman there. Yes. Yes, please. These lectures you give today, tomorrow and the next day, are they consist of the whole body or just one thing? No. Tonight she just gave an introductory lecture. Tomorrow night and the next night she'll cover completely the subtle body. All right. The whole system. But you shouldn't come late tomorrow. <laughs> what if you can't get the three days? What she say? If you can't get the three days and you seriously want to settle into it, <laughs> the film is being taken. But why are you worrying? showing it. Let us see for the present. Why should be in the future? You will get it. Why not? Why makes what makes you think? If you don't get it, you are not going to miss it. We have people here. We have a, luckily an ashram, a beautiful place. You like it can go there, they will give you. What is the first step to self-realization? <laughs> there is nothing like first, second. It's not a course, you see. The Kundalini, it's an awakening within us which takes place, which is like a living process, all right? So the Kundalini rises and shoots off here. Now some people feel 
the Kundalini wobbling down there, down below. Some people feel it in the stomach. Some people feel it here. Some people feel it here. But most of them feel it here only, jetting out like a breeze. So you just can't say what is the first step. Depends on how it rises. So everybody doesn't feel the same way. So I can't say that this is the first stage. All right? Of course, first you feel thoughtlessly aware. You become thoughtlessly aware. First thing that should happen to you when the Kundalini crosses this center. When it comes out of it, you start feeling the cool breeze here and you start feeling the cool breeze in your hands and you start feeling the cool breeze around. That's the second stage where it can go. But some people really are so great that they become absolutely doubtlessly aware what we call as nirvikalpa. They achieve that. Some of them are really, they are just there. They are so beautifully made that they just become that. There is no question left in their mind. And they become so powerful. I am amazed sometimes how they become so solidly understanding themselves. So there are some people I have known who are very, very great. And they just start emitting vibrations. They start giving realization. They start uh, curing people. They can do it. So don't condemn yourself in any way. That's first condition in surgery. So should we now have realization? Those people are sitting very much behind, should come in line with others, will be better idea. Yes, just move in as much as possible nearer. If you just slip your shoes off, it helps you to... Yes, it is much better because this mother earth helps you. Better to take out your shoes will help. If some people want to sit on the ground, also it's all right, but they should not be very far away because it's better to attend to them. Right? If there are chairs here, yes? There are plenty there. Mm, good. There are plenty of chairs here. The children can come here. Come along. Come and sit here. There's a lot of room for the children. Mm. Children are the best. I'm very happy to see them here. All right, come along, sit down, sit down. Please come along. Look at their confidence. Sit down. Oh, great. Just slip your shoes off, huh? Just slip out your shoes, all right? Great people. Mm, you too, you too. Yes, please take out his shoes. Just help him. You see, look at him, how he's alert. <laughs> there are so many children, as I told you, are realized souls. Uh, we have to understand them. All right. So now, you have to just put your hands towards me like this. Simple. Put your both the feet on the ground. Touch the Mother Earth with your feet. Just. And be relaxed. You are not to do anything that will make you tense. Means if you have anything tight here or tight there, just loosen it. Do not tighten your body also too much. Don't push back your head or push forward. Just be in a relaxed way, sit straight. Put your hands towards me like this. And as I said, the first condition is to say that, Mother, I am not guilty. At least 16 times is a punishment for people who feel that way. <laughs> Before we start, let us tell ourselves that we are not guilty because I am talking of God Almighty. He is the source of all joy, but He is the ocean of love. He is the ocean of forgiveness. He is the ocean of compassion. And what mistakes can we commit? So don't start with your guilt at all. You are all God's people. You must get your realization. So just tell yourself, closing your eyes, in your heart, Mother, I'm not guilty. Say 16 times is the best way because there are 16 petals here and this is the center gets blocked if you feel guilty. Please close your eyes. And don't open your eyes till I tell you. No, just close your eyes, see. Do you feel the cool breeze in your hand? The children? Yes, that's it. The children are already feeling. It's all bond realized. But just... Look at that. 
said, you should have brought our children also. So sweet there. Are you feeling? Good. You are all realized souls. That's why you come here. Now, the left hand, as I said, is the power of desire. So you put it towards me, left side. That means you have to desire your realization. Keep it comfortably on your lap. It's all right. Now, the right hand represents the power of action. So we have to use right hand to symbolically suggest our desire through this action. First of all, put your right hand, don't open your eyes. Please don't open your eyes at any cost. That's important. Because if you open your eyes, the Kundalini won't rise about Agya Chakra. Now put your right hand on your heart. Don't worry about anything, whether you are going to get it or not, but just put it, put little, sit little straight. You should not uh, slouch down, yes. Put your, please put it on your heart. And now say in your heart that, Mother, am I the spirit? Ask a question. Because spirit resides in the heart. Just ask a question. Mother, am I the spirit? Ask three times. Now put down your right hand on your stomach, on the left hand side. Now this is your guru principle, is your master principle, which has to be awakened. So you say ten times, Mother, I am my own guru, I am my own master. Just assert it, it's there. You just have to say it before me. I am my own master. If you have been to some gurus or anything, it will be all neutralized with it. So just say, Mother, I am my own master, because these gurus actually kill that spirit in you, kill that principle in you. Please say it ten times. Now again raise your right hand to your heart. <clears throat> and now with full confidence in yourself, because as you know, you are the temple of God. Say that, Mother, I am the Spirit. Say it twelve times. Mother, I am the Spirit. the light behind me. Now, raise the same hand, higher, onto the forehead. We have missed one center where you have to say, Mother, I am not guilty, because the spirit cannot be guilty. It is sinless. But here at this point, you have to say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Now, some of them said, that, Mother, it is difficult to forgive. But it is a myth that you are not forgiving. It's absolutely myth. You are doing nothing to that person who has harmed you or to those persons who have harmed you. You are just harming yourself. So just put your hand across, hold it tight, and say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Hold it. Just press it a little bit from both the sides. Hold it properly and just press it. Squeeze in, I think, towards the center, so that all extremes will disappear in the center. Now put this hand on top of your head, near the fontanel bone area, where you had a very 
soft bone as a child. Try to press it with your palm. Try to press it with your palm. It's quite heavy still. At this point, I can't cross your freedom. So you have to say, Mother, I want realization. Please give me realization. You have to ask for it, otherwise I cannot force it into you. Say it seven times, please. Now you raise the same hand for a while on top of your head and see if there's a cool breeze coming in. Just move it forward, backwards. See if there's a cool breeze coming out. Good. All right. You can change over now. Don't open your eyes, but change over. See from the other hand. Put the right hand towards me and put the left hand on top of your head and see if there's a cool breeze coming in. First you will feel it on top of your head and then in, and in your hands. You can always change your hand and see. Once this hand, once that hand. But don't open your eyes, but put the other hand towards me. Now, if you have felt on your head, just try to put your hands towards me and see that if you are feeling it in your hands. Further, you are seeing at the back, now see it in front. Now in the hands you might feel, just try in your hands. You may raise your hands high up like this. You can open your eyes and raise your hands like this. And ask a question that, is this the power of God? Is this the power of Holy Ghost? Is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Just ask the question. Are you feeling it? Something happening in the fingers. You'll feel very relaxed, first of all. Extremely relaxed. All right? Now just see if it is happening. In your hands. Just see in your hands, put them back. All right? Is there now? Not yet? How many of you are feeling the cool breeze in the head? Please raise your hands. It's good. And in the hands? Only in the hands. All right, it will work out. Now keep your eyes open. I'll tell you another way how you can raise your own Kundalini. You just watch me and you do the same. You put your left hand 
near towards your kundalini like this while sitting down. Let's see. Now sit little erect, all right? Now, and then this right hand is to be used like this. You put the right hand across front, below, back, up, like that. You move the right hand like this. Just start moving it. Now bring it higher over your head. Put it high and just turn it. Give it a twist and tie it up. Try again, please. Put this hand in front like this. With the right hand, you start moving in this manner, which is a clockwise manner. Just start moving. Move it properly. That's very important. Keep one hand steadily moving. Now give it a twist again and one other knot. There are three powers. So for the third power, we give three knots, not putting down our hands. Now let's do again. Now put it up. Tie it up once. Don't put down the hands. Again, give it a twist. Knot. Another one. Nicely. Now see if you are feeling the cool breeze. Feeling? You can open your eyes. Now, more people must be feeling cool breeze in their heads. It's so high as that some people are feeling. Yes, true. You can feel it higher, lower, anywhere. Just see. If you don't feel it, you have to say, I, please give me realization, mother. That's all. You have to ask for it. That's all. With your full heart. It's there. All right? Good. Just ask for it. Just for the asking, because that's your own right. All right? All the children have got it beautifully. So may God bless you all. I'll be here tomorrow again, and I'll tell you about the imbalances we have, how we create them, how to get over them. In two lectures, I hope I'll be able to cover a lot of things. But as you know, Knowledge is like an ocean, and I don't know how many lectures so far I have given, thousands, and so many are on the tape, and you can listen to them about various dimensions of our spirituality. What is the spirit, how it manifests, what is the creation, everything is there. You can come to our ashram, which is a very beautiful place, and can listen to it. You can borrow from them and enjoy it for yourself. Tomorrow I hope to see you again and day after, so I establish this realization with you. I would request you to bring some salt, sugar and water tomorrow, which I can vibrate for you, which will be a good thing to take. Uh, just bring a little bit, not much is needed, just to vibrate. Thank you very much. I think tonight we'll let Mother go home. She's had a long day <laughs> and take the chance of meeting her tomorrow night. I'll you meet everyone individually tomorrow because today they fixed me up with everything. Uh, television, radio, this, that. I was rushing everywhere, you see. And I came in the morning by plane and you know what it is like. So if you could excuse me today, Tomorrow I'll be definitely here for a longer period and I'll meet all of you individually. And also if you have any questions, it's better that you write them down in the in a paper and bring it here. Another thing I would suggest that you must take the books if you got the books. Yes. Books, but don't read them tonight because again your head will be off. <laughs> but you can take the photograph and uh, you can put your hands towards the photograph with a light before it, because photograph has got vibrations. It has the same coefficients, it gives vibrations. Luckily, you see, very good. So if you put your left hand towards the photograph first, 
with a light, you will start gradually feeling the cool breeze, right hand outside like that. You see, like an outlet given. The whole thing that's wrong there passes out of this hand. Then you put your right hand towards the photograph and the left hand outside. At this time, before sleeping if you do it, you can have a, a little basin of water in which you can put some salt and put your feet in it so the water sucks in problems within you. It's very interesting to use all the five elements. We are using light, we can use the water, every sort of thing is to be used just to give us proper balance. So I hope you take the photograph and do the needful tonight and don't discuss about it, talk about it because you cannot understand it with this limited brain. It's an unlimited space where you have gone. Thank you very much. May God bless you. As you, as you leave tonight, for those people who would like to follow it up, we're very happy to let you know where we meet each week so that you can learn about Kundalini, about the chakras and develop your realization. So give to the person standing at the back your address and your Why telephone don't you number. Why you them the address now? No harm. No, certainly. And it's the telephone number is better you write it down. Also give your name, but also... We, we have the ashram, the centre is at 1267 Burke Road Q. Again. 1267 Burke Road Q. It's, it's very easy to get to, right? There's two tram stop practically on the doorstep. However, that address is written or it's stamped on the bottom of a sheet that is enclosed in the little booklet that we have at the back of the hall. Our phone number also is there. It's 801696. You're very welcome to come and see us. On Sunday, as at the moment, we're planning to have a workshop where you are all welcome to come and spend time with Mother and she'll be able to talk to you more closely and show you in more practical ways how Sahaja Yoga, how this Kundalini awakening can work within you. Um, when Mother said bring salt, sugar and water, it's to bring a small quantity of those particular substances because they can act upon our subtle body because they, are, they embody some of the essences that we have within ourselves. Just a small quantity in an opened packet, you know, so that it's right. easy, easy right. to reach. Okay? Let's go on. Take the addresses. Oh, yeah. And just for your own sakes as much as anything, what often happens is, you know, it's quite hard to even comprehend what's gone on this evening, okay? You've come along, you've been given realisation, and, you know, it's, it's way beyond our own comprehension as to what's really happened. And it's so easy to go away and think, oh, no, they were telling me stories, it couldn't possibly be true. It is true, believe it. We can help you find that out and establish it within yourself. And just to help you, if you can give us your names and addresses, I'm certainly not forcing you to do it or anything like that, but if you can do that, then we can keep in touch with you and help you establish it further. Not with. instant God. I mean, after all, uh, you must know that sometimes it may take a little time. Of course, it works instantly. There's something wrong inside there and it takes time. So give more time to yourself, little patience with yourself, as I have patience with you. You must have some patience with yourself and just try to understand that this has to work out. That's very important. If it has not worked out, it will have to be worked out. May God bless you.